Hello mga ka-agri, welcome to Agri Historia. Another exciting episode will be featured today. Hello to all our viewers who are watching us right now in their respective homes and offices. Mga ka-agri, tara, mag-agri historia na ta. Agri Historia is an online talk series initiated by the College of Agriculture and Agri-Industries of the Caracas State University. This month's Agri Historia focuses on career path in agriculture. For now, let us greet some of our viewers. Okay, so hello to Rosemary Penola. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Agri Historia. And also, hello to Jerome Sangutan. Pa shout out po, salamat. And also to Sophia Nicole Serdan. Maayong hapon, usab kanimo, Sophie Nicole Serdan. And also to Sir Lix Mudina. Hello, mga kaagri. Hello, Sir Lix Mudina. Hello, mga kaagri. And also, hello to Carl Jan Evangelista. Good afternoon and welcome to Agri Historia. And also to uh, Elisa Joy Gallo. Good afternoon, Elisa Joy Gallo. And to Mauro Guyo. Hello, good day. Uh, Mauro Gu, uh, Goyo and also sending some uh, heart pics uh, from Christine Mantalaba and also from Mikasa Shin. Good afternoon, Mikasa Shin. All right, so uh, our past episodes in Agri Historia have been very productive and questions and doubts have been answered uh, through our. Uh, various specializations in the program of Bachelor of Science in Agriculture. And if you miss our past episodes, do not worry. You can also, you can still watch them in YouTube. Just search Agri Historia and the title of the specialization that you want to watch. Like Career Path in Animal Science, Career Path in Agricultural Economics, Career Path in Agronomy, career path in horticulture, a career path in crop protection, and career path in soil science. So many of our students have messaged us asking, Sir, what about agricultural technology? So that is what we are covering for this agri -storia. I guess you are all excited now. And our agri -storia resource speaker for today is uh, a graduate of Bachelor of agricultural technology all right so she finished her bachelor of agricultural technology cum laude at northern mindanao state institute of science and technology now the caraga state university and he is uh, she is a recipient of atep atep stands for agricultural technology education program scholarship he also finished her Master of Science in Crop Science at the Caraga State University, the same university, and she is a recipient of ATI EHRDP or Agricultural Training Institute Expanded Human Resource Development Program Scholarship. Currently, uh, starting from February 9, 2016, up to present, she is a Senior Science Research Specialist at the research division of the Department of Agriculture, Caraga, Butuan City. Some of her research functions are a project staff in soybean research and development program funded by DOSD Picard and also other projects on soybean industry development project in Caraga region. So please help me welcome the active and brilliant Mom Tihani Oxtero of DA Caraga. Let's give her a virtual round of applause, please. Good afternoon, Mom Tihani. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, we cannot see your video, ma'am. Can you please uh, turn on your video? Hello, sir. I already turned on my video, sir. Okay, wait. Um,
Okay, wait uh, for a moment. Hello, Ma'am Tihani, how are you? Are you Hello, sir. at GA Caraga right now? <laughs> no, sir, I only. <laughs> Uh, okay, okay. So uh, we'll wait for our technical staff to uh, view, to allow it to be viewed. The video of our resource speaker. Okay, I guess, uh, okay, makita na ka ma'am, nakita na ka na mo ma'am from here. So, good afternoon ma'am and welcome to AgriStoria. We are excited for your talk on agricultural technology. So, uh, let's get it on. So, uh, you can now present your uh, presentation ma'am. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon. Can I be seen, sir, my presentation? Yes, yes, ma'am. Makita na yung presentation, ma'am. Please proceed. Uh, good afternoon, especially to the incoming college students and those who want to uh, pursue the career uh, agricultural technology. So I am Tihani from the Ikaraga region, and I will be presenting to you how I enjoyed very much my chosen career as a graduate of Bachelor in Agricultural Technology. Agriculture, which means land, agri means land, and culture means cultivation. Hence, agriculture is the process of cultivation of land. When we see also technology, it is a manner of accomplishing tasks using special knowledge of a mechanical or scientific subject. So the agriculture and the technology are being combined so that this career will be pursued and will be practiced by a graduate of this degree into the actual field in the agriculture areas. So when we see special knowledge, it is an initial period where the knowledge has yet to be acquired. That is why we will be going through the four year uh, study period for this course so that we will be able to get or to acquire this special knowledge that is being needed in order for us to apply this in our uh, specialized field. It is characterized by uncertainty about how technology works and how to apply it in a particular situation. So when we say this uncertainty, we are not yet sure if the technology we are choosing or we will be applying in the field is really final or can uh, give us better yield. That is why we need to study and we need to conduct research for us to have a scientific basis for every technology that we are going to apply or even share or even extend to our farmer who is the almost uh, our utmost clientele of the clientele of this course. So when we say agricultural technology, it is the use of technology in agriculture, horticulture, and aquaculture within the aim of improving yield, efficiency, and profitability. So these three areas is very much needed for us to say that agricultural technology is very effective or is very useful in our lives. So if we will not be able to improve yield because of the technology, then our course maybe will not be able to be recognized as very efficient or outstanding in our field. It has to be profitable. So when we are going to encounter or when we uh, view the A or we say Department of Agriculture has his, its two aims, uh, masagana ng ani at mataas na kita. So yung improving yield, kailangan mataas yung yield mo at saka may mataas na kita, profitability. And technology of in agriculture is also an application of techniques to control the growth and harvesting of animal and vegetable products. So these technologies are needed for us to be able to have uh, the yield, a uh, big size paper, big size uh, soybeans, or anything that can that can contribute in achieving higher yield and will be able to market it 
so that it can give us high profit. So agricultural technology can be products, services, or application derived from agriculture that improve various inputs or processes. So in every step of our production in our land or in uh, especially in getting a specific crop, we need to have an outstanding or effective technology for us to have this kind of product that is needed for consumption of our population. What is the importance of agricultural technology? So this number one is higher productivity. So in one hectare, we need to produce a 14 metric tons of rice. So with, with this technology, we were able to achieve this because uh, in the previous years, they will only yield five tons per hectare, but because of technology, uh, hybrid rice technology, they will be able. They were able to have higher productivity in their land. Number two importance of agricultural technology or our course is the decreased use of water, fertilizer, and pesticides, which in turn keeps food prices down. So, uh, example in rice, there is this technology that they have this instrument in order for them to uh, determine if the crop needs still water. So that is still a technology that can be applied in our daily farming activities. Fertilizer. There is this LCC or leaf color chart, a technology wherein it will be determined if the crop still needs nitrogen to enable for us to decrease the use of fertilizer because it's very high price and it can uh, increase your production cost. And pesticides, which are... Uh, the IPM, the Integrated Pest Management, wherein we need just to decide if it still need pesticide in order for us to get higher yield in every aspect of our production. So number three is the reduced impact on natural ecosystem. So with all this decreased use of fertilizer and pesticide, our natural ecosystem will not be in uh, will not be harmed and will be still uh, enjoyed by our future generation. And this less ra less runoff of chemicals into rivers and groundwater. So, with all this uh, reduction of use of uh, chemical inputs, uh, there will be uh, less runoff in our rivers because everything that we applied in our field in our land will go to in the groundwater. Then, number five is increased worker safety. So. With the use of agricultural technology, our farm workers, our laborers, will be able to benefit in order for them not to be harmed, especially during cultural practices, harvesting, uh, planting, and fertilizer application. So agricultural technology as a degree, or BAT, the Bachelor of Agricultural Technology, is just a course that I was not hoping or I was not dreaming to be me as of this moment because during my high school days i really want to be a teacher especially that i have a model teacher in chemistry wherein mam narada of our chemistry subject will just bring a chalk and eraser and discuss chemistry subject in front of us so this BET is a four-year ladderized degree program that focuses entirely on plant and animal technology so at that time in 1993, when I enrolled in Normisis, now Carso, I was not able to uh, access or to enroll a teaching course. So I have no choice because we are very poor and we have we cannot access in uh, private schools because we have no money to enroll. I was forced to enroll this course, BET, for the first semester. As I, my father said, just enroll this so that in the next or the second semester, you will be able to cross to teaching a degree. But at that time, within first semester or one semester, I was convinced by our uh, instructors that BAT or the course in agricultural technology is just like hitting two birds with one stone because you can practice agriculture in our farm or in our uh, where we live yet we can still uh, teach 
to uh, courses or to students about or related to agriculture. So there are uh, universities that uh, offer BET only, a uh, general course, but there are also uh, universities, especially in Luzon, that were, they were able to uh, offer BET or Bachelor in Agricultural Technology major in post-harvest and processing technology. The next is major in farm mechanization technology, then major in animal production technology, major in crop production technology. So these four major is found in BET or general course Bachelor of Agricultural Technology where I enrolled in 1993 and one of the a recipient of this active scholarship and I was very happy at that time because there is a support for this program and there is BS or Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Technology and BS Ed in Agricultural Technology Bachelors of Science in Education in Agricultural Technology wherein the graduates of this are were uh, teaching a K-12 on agriculture subjects so the BAT program or the four-year program on BET aims to educate students in the scientific habit of thought, entrepreneurial skills, and prepare them to become professionals with entry-level competencies in technical agriculture. So there are three. Uh, this program always emphasizes the process and techniques of identifying, diagnosing, analyzing problems, and in designing packaging and applying technologies needed in the development and conservation of the agriculture and food systems resources. So during the four-year course, uh, I was able to learn everything about agriculture, but not focusing or not having a major. But it's very, for me, it's very, uh, I am very fortunate that I enrolled this course because I will not only learn about agriculture, but I was able to I was taught on how to make agriculture a uh, uh, business. It become a business, and when we graduate, we will be able to know how to make agriculture an entrepreneurial skill for us to be able to show to our farmers and our uh, clientele that farming or agriculture is an entrepreneurial uh, field wherein we can also uh, get income from it. The BAT program also teaches students the practical and theoretical, theoretical knowledge in animal production, crop production, post-harvest technology, pest management, and agribusiness management. So this uh, practical and theoretical knowledge is everything that I learned. But there are also, as I said before uh, in the previous slide, that uh, there are uh, universities that is offering a major out of this uh, theoretical knowledge in animal, crop, post-harvest, pest, and agribusiness management. The BAT program outcome, since it is a program in 1993, and we are the first batch that enjoy this program, lead in the implementation and monitoring of agricultural programs. So when I graduated in 1997, I was able to a uh, land job, but after I was uh, employed in the municipal level as an agricultural technologist, I was able to undertake these outcomes and I experienced this outcome to lead in the implementation and monitoring of agricultural programs. So being assigned in a certain barangay, I am the one who teach or to monitor everything in the barangay level, all the activities of farmers. And the next outcomes, which is expected for me, from me as a graduate of our program, is to conduct agricultural experiments and interpret data. So as where I am now in the research division, I was able to experience this and being uh, the project leader of the OSTP card funded projects on soybean for three projects, I was able to experience this next outcome in my life as a BAT graduate. And in number three, as outcome, expected outcome from is participate in developing a new generation of agricultural projects. So being a graduate 
I have to do this and I have to take part in developing of new generation. So being a project leader on soybean research and development program in the region, I was able to lead and to emphasize that being the number one soybean producer in the Philippines, we were able to liven or uh, awaken the farmers thinking that soybean production in the region is very profitable and needs to be given attention so that uh, uh, we can we will be able to be uh, recognized as number one producer of soybean in the Philippines because other regions also are number one soybean pro uh, corn producer, the region two, the region three, the number one rice producer or the rice bowl in the Philippines. So as a Karaganon, me as a bat graduate being a Karaganon, I need also to develop this new generation of agricultural projects in soybean because our farmer already uh, planted soybean for 47 years but no no technologies are being developed for this so that is why i am very much eager and very much uh, satisfied of my of my subject or my degree because of this outcome that uh, is very real for when we graduate in our courses the number four is to supervise and manage private and public organizations so i was not being uh, employed in private organization but in public so being a technician a planning officer a researcher i was able to engage in many uh, organizations the farmer association the rural improvement club in our barangay the in our municipal the municipal agriculture and fishery council so being a graduate of this course I was able to uh, contribute in supervising these public organizations that lead to the development in our society or locality. What are the career opportunities of our path graduate? So you must you can be able to pursue path in farm, plant, laboratory or other corporations and establishments that are a part of the agricultural technology. So when we graduate, because we will be hired, we will, uh, when we are hired, especially in private uh, entities, they are specializing a uh, certain crop that they are producing or uh, animal that they are raising in order for them to produce or to provide services. Uh, example in animal is dairy farming or goat farming, goat dairy farming. So in that moment, when you are growing, we are hired in that institution, uh, you will be able to uh, specialize in that field through uh, experience being, uh, being hired in that, uh, uh, in that institution. So as career opportunities, you will also apply roles as, as agricultural technician. So when we are going, we are hired in the government, we become agricultural technician. And I was in this role when, for five years, from 2007, from 2007 to 2012, five years, agricultural merchandise representative. So I have my classmates that were being hired in uh, in business establishments, in especially in pesticide, in farm inputs, fertilizers, and they are hired in this establishment. Laboratory animal technician, if you are being hired in animal producing institution or establishment. Government and private agency staff. So as of now, I am a government staff in the research division of the DARF 413. Animal care specialist. So when you are hired in a uh, doctor or in animal clinic, you will be able to uh, assist veterinarians. So you will be able to specialize also in animal care. Commercial farm manager. So in Pigiri, you will become manager when you are hired in this uh, business institution and animal nutritionist. Because we have our subject, uh, Feeds and feeding, we'll be able to know how to compute uh, the crude protein or the appropriate uh, mass or 
feeding at a certain stage of animals. So there will this will be our there, we have many opportunities for our BAT or BAT course as a graduate of this degree. So the study of Aquino, MMUPLB Philippines in 2005 on occupational performance of that BAT or Diploma in Agricultural Technology, Bachelor in Agricultural Technology, because this course is a plagiarized course, as I said in the uh, previous years, I previous slides, that is two-year Diploma in Agricultural Technology. And for you to be a BAT graduate, you need to uh, proceed another two years uh, uh, for this that uh, bat pro that's why it's called that bat and if you will not proceed but you are still a graduate of that or diploma in agricultural technology so it's up to you if you are going to proceed into bat so with this study graduates of the three types of higher education institution in Mindanao Philippines revealed so there's a study conducted by UPLB that job hunting took less than one year after graduation if you have to choose this bachelor on agricultural technology course because you have many outlets no you can be hired in animal uh, in, uh, entrepreneurial activity in crafts in post harvest in uh, fishery so everything that you have learned as a BET will be able to uh, practice that when employed that is why less than one year we have we can uh, grab a job uh, for me, in 1997, I graduated in April, April, May, June, July, August. After five months, I was hired as a uh, substitute uh, instructor at pharmacist then because there's uh, somebody who take uh, took uh, maternity leave. I was hired by the president of pharmacist to take place as a substitute. And after that, I was hired in... Philippine Rice Research Institute or Phil Rice in RTR uh, office. So me, uh, this study of UPLB just proved that really being a BAT graduate does not take us too long or hard for us to uh, get or to get up, uh, uh, employment. So occupational performance expressed in terms of employability and productivity so being employed and being productive in our course after graduation of that but graduates from state colleges no because uh normacist was uh, one of these state colleges being mentioned because normacist is was still state college at that time was highly significantly different from that of graduates from state universities and private sectorial institutions so we will not be worried if we will be hired immediately after uh, graduation because of this study we're able to find hope a uh, find ray of hope and light that uh, assured us that we can still get job after this uh, graduation so being also a bat graduate based on my experience i was able to uh, uh, browse this scholarship over there are many agricultural courses being offered. So number one is Sharka, Southeast Asian Regional Center for Graduate Study in Agriculture. So as a graduate of agriculture, you can still apply for this scholarship. We have also this Mombosho and Fulbright Scholarship in Japan. So if you are still contented of the four-year course, you still you want to pursue your masteral or your doctorate you can have or can enroll this and you're just going to surf this in the internet and is this will show up as one of the institution offering a scholarship for agriculture courses number two is the department of agriculture the deati uh, agricultural training institute and bureau of agricultural research so in this number two uh, institution offering uh, graduate studies i was able to apply this ATI EHRDP because they are offering this in order to strengthen the human resource of the Department of Agriculture. So I was enjoying this uh, scholarship with all the uh, financial assistance for me to graduate in Master of Science in Crop Science. And in the IBAR, Bureau of Agricultural Research. So every institution uh, affiliated to 
uh, an, an, a network, research network, will be granted by the Bureau of Agricultural Research or BAR with a scholarship. Number three is the DOST or the Department of Science and Technology or the PICARD, Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resources Research and Development. So we do have this great or graduate research and education assistantship for technology program. So you can also do this, uh, graduate uh, masterials and doctorate. And you have this DOST SEI or Science Education Institute or Accelerated Science and Technology Human Resource Development Program of SEI. And this uh, scholarship are being lodged in every university where being accredited by the OST to offer this scholarship. As an agricultural technology as a passion. So during our first course, we are being molded to become entrepreneur and to be, become an employee. So we have this choice, two choice. We graduate this with two stones hitting two birds with one stone because we will become entrepreneur or you will choose to work in the government or in the private institution. So entrepreneurial passion seen as arising when the entrepreneur exhibits intense positive feelings towards a specific entrepreneurial activity or domain they undertake in relation to their entrepreneurial venture. So when we have this in our heart to go in entrepreneurial because entrepreneurial path, so we, need, we will be pursuing this path to become entrepreneur. For me, as a back graduate, I was able to pursue my passion for work because uh, after five months, I was already hired. I was not able to find a hard time in uh, being or applying in uh, for a job. So because I was start, I started as a job worker. So after uh, 40, 14 years of graduation, I am where I am now because of my passion for work, wherein is the intense enthusiasm and excitement for what you do can be the difference between doing it and regretting that and getting done well. So in my part, as a, when I chose this passion for work, I was able to hope to have for another institution, from one institution to another institution uh, to find greener pasture as agricultural technology graduate. So, when you choose this course, you can also have this kind of opportunity after graduation or after four years. In entrepreneurial passion, the Department of Agriculture are offering the young agripreneurs can loan up to 500,000 with no collateral and zero interest from the A. So with our new secretary, the secretary William D. Dar, uh, launched this, this uh, Kaya program for our uh, young agripreneurs. So when we graduate and we choose to be trip entrepreneurial course or path, become a farmer, then we will be able to uh, access this for the Department of Agriculture. We have this Kaya, Capital Access for Young Agripreneurs Loan Program. So eligible borrowers are young agripreneurs who are 18 to 30 years old and graduates of formal or non-formal agri-fisheries schooling, including training. So being graduate of BET, you will be able to, uh, to be eligible as borrower of Kaya program in the Department of Agriculture. So eligible loan purpose, to finance the capital requirements of their startup or existing farm or fishery business. So we have us in our back to support our passion, either uh, work, or other uh, entrepreneurial passion, the Department of Agriculture to provide us the needed financial resources for us to continue our passion as entrepreneur. So we have this also number two is the mentoring and attracting youth in agriculture or Maya. We just started this with a Bayanihanto uh, program, be a Maya intern. All graduates of agriculture courses are being uh hired as intern in the department of agriculture so they are being called as maya no maya intern so the maya program generally aims to address the increasing gap in agriculture sector improving matches between labor and supply and demand and ensuring that skill sets required meet industry standards and global competitiveness so it aims to the program 
we are already a graduate of four year course and we need to be able to go or to experience the real world of entrepreneur and in the real world of work so six months all graduates of courses in agriculture are being uh, employed or being hired as intern or accommodated as intern in the department of agriculture which aims to develop a young cadre of youth agri business leaders that are market ready have the necessary skill sets capabilities and commitment to excellence with the right attitude to ensure success that will ultimately benefit the stakeholders, especially the farmers, fishers, and the consuming public. So next is to advance the agency's youth in agriculture strategy through two tracks, the employment track, the day succession planning, and entrepreneurship track, or inclusive agribusiness and entrepreneurship. So we have our uh, agri uh, Maya intern in our region, 16, uh, that agriculture course graduates and when they chose the employment track they are being deployed in uh, cooperatives or association who are engaging uh, who are engaging employment or office works and for entrepreneur they are being deployed in uh, association who are engaging business especially in Santiago the uh, San Isidro multipurpose cooperative were in they are being funded by PRDP so as uh, uh, undertaking agripreneurship in Abaca. So they were being deployed there. So everything or all the agri or the Maya intern were there and, and were being paid 20,000 uh, allowance every month for them to have uh, an experience or a deployed in the real world of work and uh, employment and agripreneurship. So, for the passion for work, because I was able to be hired after five months, so I was being the recipient of the Attic Scholarship in 1997. And as I heard at the time in 1993, we were the first batch to be able to benefit this program, the scholarship program of Attic. I pursue my master's degree on crop science of the scholarship of ETI in 2013 because for me, I still need to uh, hone my skills and my uh, scientific knowledge as a Bachelor of Agricultural Technology graduate so that we'll be able to contribute more for the development of the agriculture industry in the region. So I passed the board examination in 2011, 14 years after graduation, because of the time I was very focused on uh, in uh, in my work and also at that time it was being still agreed if the it graduate will be able to uh, take a board exam or not but in 1997 it was decided that they have they are uh, qualified to take the bar uh, the board exam but still I took it in 2011 but I still uh, took the but this uh, board that I passed served me as a ladder for me to step up and to uh, apply for another position being a uh, BET graduate. So with all this passion, I was able, when I searched my name in, in uh, when I sort my name in Google, I was able to see my name and I'm, I'm very proud. Example in this mad, mad yes, pen. I, I was not wrong or I was not mistaken when I chose a BET course at that time that i uh, enjoyed the stipend 200 pesos per semester book allowance and free of dormitory and everything and when i have contributed already in the employment or in the my passion for work i was able to be uh publish my name in the or I, my name is found already in uh, google when i search it so rice farmers expect better harvest with warm training being a speaker of this technology when I was still at Pale Rice or Philippine Rice Research Institute in, nine, in 1998 to 2007 or nine years. So I have also, I was also one of the uh, translator or Tighubad of the Kechik of the Pale Rice. So in this Tighubad, being Tighubad, I was able to have another income. We were able to receive 20,000, a package on how to 
make the English version of ballad chick of field rice to be desired in order for our farmers uh, to be able to understand their technology. So being a bat graduate, you have many opportunities to go to, to, uh, to explore, no? to higubad. Then here also in the PIA, I was able to see my name in uh, still the CSU bring homes, brings home the ninth interagency LGO statistics quiz championship. So it was in 2015 when I was in the provincial agriculture office that I was invited to be part of the team. So I was one and we were able to garner as uh, from LGU and army second runner up because still the champion is the issue in 2015. But I was still very proud because uh, the champion is the issue where I was, I came from, and then we are the second, we're in. Uh, I am part of the uh, team in the provincial government of Agustan del Norte. So I also found my name as a graduate in the MDGF Achievement Fund or the International Labor Organization. Because as a technician in uh, uh, RTR, Municipality of RTR, for five years in 2007 to 2012, we're being part of the ILO uh, project wherein we are recognized as part in contributing the success of this NDGA for Achievement Fund, uh, being uh, collaborated by DTI, Provincial Agriculture, Office of Agusan del Norte, DOLI, and ILO. So, agricultural technician, technology as a profession. So, where does my profession brought me? So, when I was in high school, I when I talk about in beach, I will tell myself, what is after that uh, mountain? What is the back of that mountain? Because when we see the the beach is or the sea is very wide so it was how what is where is this uh, other nation being mentioned or being told to us so with this technology uh, at or bet that i gained or the degree i earned in, in 1997 my profession brought me to thailand in 2006 I was able to attend international workshop on using nature farming and effective microorganism technology in Sarabor province. So this is the effect or the fruit I enjoyed after taking my BAT course. In 2010, I was able to participate in the international training workshop on hybrid rice at Changsha City, China. So everything is free because there is the e bar that support an uh, international fair if you want to travel for have a training. So you just need to have your collaboration, your coordination in our Department of Agriculture for you to build these uh, uh, activities or to build these trainings in the international arena. So these are the significant milestones of my profession as a BAT graduate. So in this year, in 2011, I was have I was able to receive a director's award of our day 13 Karaga efforts in collaboration with UPLB plant breeders, the registration of two traditional soybeans in Karaga region. So these soybean varieties were being accredited or registered in the national seed in the state council as a variety. Even though I am not a plant breeder, I am not uh, concentrating a specific uh, major as a bat graduate with uh, general, uh, general, general major, everything is being uh, learned or undertaken. But I was able to uh, have this amazing fit, as my <laughs> colleague said, because I have this award, though I'm not a plant breeder, but with my collaboration, with my coordination as a researcher, I was able to uh, coordinate with UPLB plant breeders. So it is just your passion for work that made you to have all this uh, milestone in your life as a BAT uh, graduate. In 2015, this, as I said, the interagency in LGGO is statistics quiz. I was able to have this when I was still in uh, provincial agriculture. Then in 2012, recipient in national and regional awards. So the DE is 
uh, giving awards to agricultural technologists who are uh, contributing much significant significance to the yield of our farmers, especially that we are uh, the rice granary in Agustan del Norte. So with my five years stay as agricultural technologist, I was able to receive these regional awards and have this 20,000 cash award, a national award. And I was able to be there in Manila and fly and uh, ride with a plane for free. And that's our, uh, our wish when we're still young. Can I ride this plane? Because I have no money and we are from the poor family. So in 2011, passed the board examination for agriculturists. So uh, being a bat graduate is not a hindrance for us to uh, be one of the top rank in in the uh, board exam. No, so it is just your passion, your dedication for your course and study for all the subject areas in order for you to pass the examination. And remember, the board exam is your ladder is your stepping stone to get your uh, inner desire in your heart so in 20, 2009 awarded by the, with a scholarship by the it's our dp in 2008 uh, i was able to attend four months training at science city of munoz nueva Ecija with our chinese who are our instructors on hybrid rice so at this time also i was able to be recipient in national and local awards because uh, being a technician in RTR LGO for five years, and I was able to practice my the technology that I am bringing from Phil Rice, the warm technology. So we are producing uh, organic fertilizer in the locality of RTR, and then it contributes to income in our locality. So I was being awarded then in 2008, and in 2005, the best. Uh, Paper, Development Paper Award and Presenter Award was being garnered by me when I was still in Phil Rice for nine years. So everything that you did, being a bad graduate, is not a hindrance to, uh, to achieve all these milestones in your life. So DARFO 13, a senior science research specialist for five years. So I was not being uh, said that, oh, you cannot undertake this project because you are a bad graduate but still the three project of Picard uh, worth 2.5 million was being managed by me as a bad graduate then project leader on product development and commercialization of locally available agri products in Caraga so thus these projects I have uh, I am uh, leading or undertaking uh, really need for me to be uh, another course so being a bad graduate is uh, something to be proud of for what I have achieved. Then in PLGU for three years as planning officer too, after I, uh, I took the board exam. So as planning officer, I planned in the province all the agricultural activities because it, I was assigned in the provincial agriculture office. Then MLGU for five years as agricultural technician. And Phil Rice Agusan, a science research assistant for hybrid rice, science aid, and administrative aid for nine years. So this is where my profession brought me as a bad graduate. Attended various training, seminars, workshops in international, national, regional, and local level, and presented technical papers and scientific conferences, authored and co-authored when I was still in Phil Rice. And every experience I had brought me or with this experience i was uh, readily uh, hired in de region as senior srs because of my uh, experience in phil rice in presenting and publishing uh, scientific papers so i was also a member to various organization the p p paa philippine association of agriculturists incorporated crop science society of the philippines ati caraga scholars association and Phil Arm, Philippine Association of Research Managers. So being a graduate of BAT does not leave us behind of what others have uh, degree are being taken by other individuals or by other students. So this is a quick key question. Can we feed a future 9 billion people equitably? 
healthily and sustainably. Because this is our biggest challenge that everything, everybody can equitably or can access the food that is being needed by our body. Healthily, are we producing crops or food anima, uh, from animals or crops a healthy or a chemical free and sustainably and will be able to sustain until uh, we'll end to uh, uh, access this uh, by the consumers equitably, healthily, and sustainably. So this is, I will end my presentation with this quote. And when I was able to read this quote uh, with it in 2017, I think, once in your life, you need a doctor, a lawyer, a policeman, and a preacher. No, we need press every Sunday. We need a policeman when there are troubles in our life. We need a lawyer when we are being betrayed or we are being uh, deprived of our of our rights. And we need a doctor when we are sick. But every day, three times a day, you need a farmer. So this is our aspiration as a BAP graduate for us to contribute for the needs of our population or our consumers in the future. So thank you very much and good afternoon. All right, what a wonderful presentation by Ma'am Tihani Oxtero. Ma'am, we really enjoyed your presentation. Thank you so much, Ma'am Tihani Oxtero, for your comprehensive and amazing presentation about agricultural technology as a program or a course and i think our students are really considering bachelor of agricultural technology as their course uh, for our incoming first year students and maka agree type in your questions for our resource speaker and our resource speaker would be glad to answer your questions and our viewers i think our viewers are already excited to ask their questions and joining us this afternoon would also be a faculty uh, who are who is teaching a subject in the BAT, but he is actually a food science uh, faculty, Mr. Lix Modina. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, hello. Good afternoon. Hello, okay. Mom Tahani. Hello, sir, good afternoon, sir. Thank you for this opportunity. Okay, sir Lix will um, moderate the questions from our students. Okay, so first off, I have will say the presentation was really inspiring. Indeed, I hope that the students who listened would have a change of heart in choosing their course. I hope they would choose this agricultural technology. So first question here is we have from Miss Ella. So good afternoon po ma'am. My question, ma'am, is how about those incoming freshmen, ma'am? What are the scholarship you may know that is eligible for incoming first year college? Thank you, ma'am. God bless. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for this uh, question. So number one, a uh, scholarship that you will be able to avail uh, being a uh, freshman of, uh, in college. Number one is the OST. They are offering this uh, the OST scholarship and all the courses that uh, qualified for this scholarship includes agriculture, their number one course that can qualify for this scholarship. You just need to pass the examination that they, uh, they are given. Thank you. Okay, no, aside from our free tuition, no? so we also have a uh, scholarship from the OST. So, additional income, kumbaga, bisag student pa mo, you have all additional income through scholarships. So, we have also another. Ah, yes, that's very, very nice to hear. So, yes, no, so we have another question from Mr. Franco Manoy. So, good afternoon, ma'am. Kung ikaw ay magiging agricultural technician, Qualified ka ba na maging head of office sa isang local government unit, MLGU, sa Department of Agriculture? Salamat, ma'am. At present, 
I am applying <laughs> in the provincial agriculture office. So with all the experience I had, I was qualified because as of now, I am salary grade 19. So the position you are asking in municipal agriculture office is uh, salary grade 24. So with my uh, salary grade standing as of now, I am qualified to apply as a municipal agriculturist in the locality. And number two, there are many friends I have known that though is, they are still agricultural technologists, this is salary grade 10, but when they are being uh, justified in the civil service and they have this enough uh, experience and they have this master's of science that they graduated because that is number one basic qualification that you are graduate to become a department head. So you, they, they still become a municipal agriculturist. Thank you, sir. Okay, no. So aside from that, no. Earlier we have heard that um, the hiring rate within five months, your mom na ka hire na. So don't worry about jobs; it will follow. Jud kay kani taas ang hiring rate sa ato bachelor in agricultural technology. So we have a next question from Mr. Magical Gloribel. So what? What's the most challenging experience in studying ag tech? Uh, when I remember uh, 14 years ago, the most challenging experience in studying agri tech is when I got zero <laughs> in my feeds and feeding subject with Dr. Emmanuel Nono. No, because we were able, we were assigned to uh, memorize all the scientific name of forage and grasses <laughs> for our feeds and feeding subject that uh, you need to uh, scientific name so we're not able to underline it no diba okay when you're writing it by hand you need to underline an uh, scientific name but if it is in uh in computer it's being italized so i got zero <laughs> and i was aiming to have an honor when i got it so i cried it as I, I told to myself if i am not poor and when i did not do laundry in saturdays and sundays i was able to memorize everything you know so that is why you need to be have the full heart in order to grab all the challenges being an agricultural technology as students but still, I concurred everything. <laughs> yeah. Okay, mom, that's very good to hear. No? But I think you're not the only one with that problem. I'm not the challenge. So even some students here enrolled, we have the same encounter. You, you encounter the same problem regarding scientific names. So, hindi ka nag mom. So, we have another question from Ms. Maria Dikang. Ah, comment. So, sorry, this is a comment. So, wow. Naa jud me knowledge on sa among future job as BAT graduate. Yes, no? So, based sa present nat ni Miss Tihani, nindot kaya presentation. So, bisag ako, if I am still young enough, I will be inspired to do again, to take this agricultural technology course for the future so another comment we'll read good afternoon ma'am how to apply in the maya intern oh this is a question so ma'am how do you apply in the maya intern with uh after the funding of bayanihan to program with the covid uh situation we have the day a is uh, launching this uh, uh maya intern it was being broadcasted like uh, uh on the platform no uh in internet on this so you just need to apply online in the bureau of agricultural research pero nag end siya nung june within this year but still it will be uh pursued you no know, after all the programs are being uh, in place because that fund using at that time was on bayanihan to program so it was the uh, trial you no know, if how this uh agriculture graduates are doing after their courses are being uh, graduated. So in June 30, the, there we have 16 uh, different kinds of courses that apply or being qualified as Maya intern in the Caraga region. But it is being implemented nationwide 
So you just apply where the region or where region you belong. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mom. No? So to follow up lang kwanto na question, Mom. So can we contact you as uh, a link for that application or how to apply? Yes, you just uh, browse in the Google, no? Maya Intern Day A Program. Uh -oh. Okay. You just type all the uh, 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 key text, no? Uh, you are searching. Pero uh, nag-end pa sila nung June, in June. So maybe we will be able to launch for another if the uh, Day A will be able to replace this. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. So we have a comment, no? From Mr. Judith. Hildo, so a very satisfactory and a motivation to all incoming freshmen. Salamat kayo, Ma'am Tihani. Yes, Salamat indeed, I will agree. I will agree with that comment. Uh, another comment from Margel. Uh, thank you for sharing your knowledge and inspiring experience, Ma'am. God bless po. You're welcome. God bless. So, another no? So... Salamat mo, munta mahead ka sa provincial para makapangayo mig recommendation para mag-graduate na mo, mga apply dayon mi sa LJU. That's from Miss from Mr. Franco Munoy. So, yes, no, so we praise na 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 mahead na si Ma'am Tihani. So, so ang mga graduate ka ron, nanatay linkin sa atong provincial LJU. <laughs> All right, so I think our students, uh, our viewers, wala pa kayo sa lahi question, Sir Lex. Uh, I have a question to Ma'am Tihani. Okay, Ma'am? Ma Darnes. <laughs> okay, so Ma'am, for you, what are the skills or character you should possess as a student to develop, to become successful in BAT career? Nga nahimong uh, useful sa imuhang career. The skill that a student must possess during the four-year course, no? Yes, ma'am. Or they must develop. They must develop. They study skill. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I always I write in my notebook or I have this matrix uh, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, until Friday and every hour. What is my time for library? What is my time for this laboratory, for this subject? You just need to manage your time because... Every one of us has equal time, and it is just the way we use our skill in order to manage the time for us to satisfy the basic requirements for us to graduate as a bat, uh, of a bat degree. Be passionate of your studies, and when you, uh, when you meet this hardship, this in, uh, this moment that you are down. Just pray and God will give you all the uh, the courage and strength to pursue and be able to develop this habit into a skill after you graduate for the four-year course. All right. Thank you so much, Ma, for your answer. Uh, indeed, uh, hard work and really passion for studies and for work is very important. Okay, Sir Lix? Yes. Question from our viewer. Yes, no, we have another question from Sir Jerome. So, good afternoon, ma'am. As lang nako kung mo apply ka sa government or private institution, did ba jud nga board exam passer? Salamat, ma'am. Hello, Sir Jerome. Uh, when you apply for private, no need for board exam. But when you apply for government, for permanent position, you need a uh, board exam. This is the new a directive that uh, graduate of agriculture who will be uh, applying for a co uh, position as agricultural technician, senior agriculturist, municipal agriculturist must be a board passer on agriculture board. Thank you.
Hello, hello, ma'am. Hello. Ay, pasensya ka yung ma'am. Uh, we have a uh, internet, a uh, technical problems on the internet. Okay, so ah, uh, na wala pa na ato balikan siguro ma'am ang ibang answer on the question by Jerome Sangutan, which is the uh, mo apply sa government or private institution need budget your board exam passers. Salamat ma'am. Hello, Sir Jerome. Good afternoon. So, if you are going to apply in the private institution, there is no need for board exam and civil service. But when you apply for a permanent position in the government, you need to have this board exam because it's the new directive of the civil service that for you to be filled up in an agriculture position as permanent, you need this bar, uh, bar, board exam. Thank you. Next. Okay, no, thank you. Sorry for the technical difficulties. So we're back. So thank you for that answer, Mama. So if you will apply, you did not need a board exam passer, just your application. But if that for the government employee, need not anymore. So we have also another question here from Mom Rizel. Mabuting. Uh, so, thank you, ma'am. Another question. One of the possible uh, problem in job seeking was applicant must have experience. And sometimes, the most who were called has backers. Is it still possible nowadays? <laughs> that is... Uh... Other side of the story, and we should not tackle that <laughs> very specific because that is what we heard, and it depends on how they have their backer. So we have no authority to <laughs> to tackle or to mention their backer. So as long as you pray for God, you ask her guidance and assistance to be able for you to have a bright future and to get, uh, have this greener uh, uh, greener pasture in your life, you will be guided by him where you are going or what you are going to do to achieve those goals in your life. Yes, exactly. No, so you don't need to have a backer. You prove to your resume on say mo mga achievements. Kana proof niya kana ihar jud mo anak nila. Hindi na sila makadili. Mawa na nila backer basta nakablack and white niya imo mga achievements. Okay, jud kaya na. So no. I hope that answers your question. No? So we have another question from uh, Miss Maria Dikang. So good afternoon, ma'am. Nabak high possibility na maka abroad me. Yes, you can have the possibility. No, we have our classmates that applied. No, okay. There are other countries who are uh, requiring agricultural graduates. So. When I remember in 1998, my mother said, you have to go to abroad and did it an apple picker. No? So uh, mm -hmm. in other nation or other, uh, another area or place in abroad, what is your work? It's just specific no? for the whole. <laughs> you will be an apple picker. You will be assigned mm -hmm. in dairy, go, go dairy. No? You just have to extract milk. So. Our course as bad graduate has large or great opportunity to go to abroad if you have all this uh, degree as uh, being graduated. Oh, yes, no. So we have very, very large opportunities if you want to go abroad. Okay, see, si agricultural technology cut across na siya kanan. So application na sa technology and uh, sad to say or nice to say na. Ang abroad is advanced sila of technology. So we can apply really there. We can apply what we have learned in this agricultural technology na to sa abroad. So plus na na ang salary na po. <laughs> so okay, no, I hope that answers your question, Mr. Kam. Additional, no? So we have also internship program here at the CSU. So continue man siya, but uh, there's screening process. There. So there's a screening process. So I hope you do well in the school para maka-abroad po during sa atong internship program. Okay. 
So, Pushita, so another question. So, from Mr. Mauro Goyo, uh, what about civil service passers, ma'am? Are they qualified to be government employee in agriculture? Hello, Sir Mauro. In the research division where I belong, the science research specialist one position, SRS1, then SRS2, senior SRS does not qualify, uh, does not need a uh, board exam. Only agricultural, uh, agriculturist one, agriculturist two, senior agriculturist, supervising agriculturist needs this board exam. But civil service is a must in these uh, positions. Thank you. Okay, no, so we have to take another exam, civil service exam, but don't worry, saya naman at siya. Sisi, or man, di ba, ma'am? Ma'am, galing ako. I wanted to try to uh, uh, exam civil service. Then my friend, a doctor in Pilray said that, Tihani, if you will be dropped, you will uh, you will fail. Your civil service will not be uh, revived being granted a uh, civil service grant of being an honor graduate. <laughs> so I was afraid. So I was. I have no experience of taking the exam. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So no. So thank you for that, mom. No, so, so next question um, from Rizal Mabuting again. So. Uh, where to apply in abroad, ma'am? I mean, can you tell us company or good agency where we can apply to? Thank you, ma'am. Hello, Ms. Rizal. I cannot recommend you an agency, but you can browse Sadoli, the Department of Labor and Employment, and uh, other agencies in the government that are assisting, no? They are posting in Facebook and uh, in Google where this uh, eligible or credible agency where you can apply to. So I, at this moment, I have no experience for abroad because I'm afraid to go to abroad because of homesick. <laughs> so homesick feeling that I cannot endure and I cannot uh, say I can endure it. So I still choose to be in the Philippines. So don't worry, Dolly will assist and they are advertising agriculture graduates or skilled agricultural staff or personnel to have abroad just be sure that the time you uh, graduate you have to uh, collaborate or to coordinate with eligible government agency to assist you thank you okay thank you for that ma'am no so need you tamo po collaborate with government agencies okay uh, we have heard already news na kanay mga nagkipang ilad ng mga abroad so did na to mo contact yun ng dole para safe ang ato pag trip abroad okay thank you so I hope that answers your question so we have another question from Mr Solis so based on what I have read from the article of Findu University the BAT program does not have board exam tinood ba ni or we are able to take the board exam graduated from BAT program Hello, Sir Aljon. Uh, what year is this article? Uh, what is the date of this article? Because, as I said during my presentation, that when I graduated in 1997, it was still de debated if BET graduate is qualified to take the board exam. But it was in 1998 that all those BAP graduates were able or were given the opportunity to take the exam. I was just uh, delayed for 14 years before I take the exam because I am not still confident to take the time because I already got married, I have four children to attend to, so, and I was enjoying my my uh, employment at Pill Rice, being able to be in uh, to those uh, experts in rice. So at that time, in 2011, uh, that time I was able to take the board exam. But other graduates in 1998 started to take the exam. Thank you. Okay, no? So I hope that answers your question, Mr. Aljan Solis. So screening from the comments. So we have no more, we can find no more questions. So kung gusto po mo mag-question, please do type on the comment section para atotobogon ni Ms. Tihani. 
Okay, so uh, Sir Lix, uh, while waiting for our viewers, I have some questions regarding the board exam. So, uh, were you during the board exam when you take the board exam? It was uh, many years after you graduated, right, ma'am? Yes, so, sir. how was uh, were you working that time? Uh, as technician, agricultural technologist, 2011. Okay, so for our students who are uh, thinking of uh, having their review and also for taking the exam, what was your technique in uh, during your review? What was your technique in balancing review and work map? Can you uh, tell us some of those? At that time when I have the review, I am a mother, an employee, <laughs> and as a student. So I always uh, start waking up at 2 a.m. Then at 5 p.m., I have a nap in order to rest my eyes because when you uh, take a bath, your eyes will be damaged. So my husband will always be angry at me because it's cooking time. But you need to hurdle all these uh, challenges because you have the determination to take the board exam. And the challenge is that, oh, you're a cum laude, but you did not pass. <laughs> so I have those challenges in my heart that I always pray to God. And the very motto I have is, uh, study as if no one will help you and pray as if no one will uh, assist you during the exam and then i told to myself i have all the stress being a mother of four <laughs> of stress but it's just a matter of mind conditioning and the passion to really get that passing exam in the board exam you know because it is six subjects six subjects then when I took the exam, it's really very hard, three days. <laughs> then I take that in uh, St. Mary Academy in Cagayan. And for that half day, I was able to go in CR for three times, the four times, because I am stressed. We have all this in mind, no? Being a graduate already for how many years and everything. But God is there. He knows that I'm very... Uh, for uh, passionate in order for me to take the exam or to pass the board exam. So it's just coming from your heart in order or what you're going to do to attack those challenges in life. Thank you, sir. All right. So indeed, hard work and passion is the key, right, mom? Yes, sir. Yes, the right attitude. So for our students, the right attitude matters. So uh, many of our students are thinking now, uy, kadagan ba ni nga mga requirements? Uy, nga ni, on saan ninyo nga pagbalance, mga mental stress na mi, ana-ana. So I think, uh, well, again, it's a reason for what you have presented to us, ma'am, that you are a mother of many children, and then you have work, and then review, and then you really woke up at 2 a.m. just to review. So those are the type of, the kind of attitude that we want for our students, not uh, really to uh, give them, to stress them, but also to prepare them for a future uh, work. And uh, indeed, it really shows that your hard work, na kita gin ang kanabang, and um, fruit of your labor through your achievements and awards. Indeed, you are a brilliant uh, agricultural technologist. And uh, I, I could say that you are an epitome of the agricultural technology. Thank you, Ram, you, for your presentation. <laughs> all right, to all our viewers, uh, did you enjoy the discussions? Indeed, that was a very productive and uh, exciting discussions about a career path in agricultural technology. Thank you to our resource speaker, Ma'am Tihani Obstero of DA Karagat, a senior science research specialist. And thank you as well to Sir Lix Mudina, the faculty of food science, who is also teaching Bachelor of Agricultural Technology. Thank you so much, sir. Welcome, sir. All right. So don't forget to our, all our viewers, don't forget to answer the evaluation form in the live chat and the, uh, to get your certificate. And now let us award the certificate of appreciation to our speaker. speaker. Okay, okay. Let's let, 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 let,
Honey, honey, working her knowledge and expertise, as a source speaker in Agri Storia, career path in agricultural technology. Given this, the 26th day of July 2021 at the College of Agriculture and Agri Industries of the Coraga State University Main Campus, Ampayong, Butuan City, Agusan del Norte. Signed, Elizabeth P. Parak, College of Agriculture and Agri Industries. Once again, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your valuable time and interesting discussions to all our viewers about agricultural technology. And indeed, and indeed, not only, not only our IT students, students, but our agricultural our students, students are now, are now have boosted their 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 um, field, field of specialization. Of specialization. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, so to gain, uh, if you missed our past episodes, you can watch them on YouTube. Just search Agri Historia and the career path or the specialization that you want to view. So you could uh, just search them at YouTube. So uh, for this month, we have already featured a lot of specialization. So for this month, this is our end topic on agriculture, uh, on Agri Historia web doc series. So you can watch our past, our, I mean, our future, uh, episodes by uh, subscribing at our YouTube. You could also follow us, Korea, College of Agriculture and Agri-Industries on our FB page and be updated with our latest activities. All right, so uh, that's it for today. And thank you for watching Agri Historia and for supporting to all our students, our viewers, mga ka-agri, always support Agri Historia. And you could also send us your uh, comments and also suggestions on what topics that we will be featuring in our Agri Storia. We would be glad to hear from you and really uh, this has been really productive month on Agri, uh, Agri Storia web talk series and we really enjoy you and we really, we really appreciate you on supporting Agri Storia. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching. See you next time and have a great day. God bless everyone.